Today we will be discussing verb. We have already discussed the rest of the parts of the speech. We want to have a comprehensive look on verb. Verb is the action word. The smallest possible definition of the verb is a, it's an action word. Verb is the word that denotes action in any given sentence. So far as its division are concerned, we can divide it into two major segmental divisions. First is finite verb and second one is non-finite verb. Non-finite verb are also known as double parts of speech as they perform as different parts of speech like noun, adjective or any other parts of speech but they don't behave as verb in any given sentences or used situation. They either work as noun or they work as an adjective. That's why they are known as double parts of speech. First of all, I would like to talk about the finite verb. Finite verb is of four parts. Linking verb, auxiliaries, transitive and intransitive verb. And linking verb can be further segmentalized. Its function can be divided into two parts. Linking verb either redefine, identifies or it describes. Linking verb does two functions. Got it? First, it re-identifies re or it describes. For example, one example for re-identification is He is a monster. He is a monster. Monster is describing him or identifying him. Who is he? He is being identified as a monster. Then description. Linking verb describes here. He looks stunning. How does he look? He looks stunning. So list a few major list of linking verbs can be here as to be, to appear, to become, to feel, to look, to seem, to smell, to sound to taste and for example he was happy he is happy <coughs> Ellen is a beast these are linking verbs but he seems to be very happy he appears to be very happy these all are examples of linking verb Further, another division of the finite verb we will come here as the auxiliaries. Auxiliary verb are also known as helping verbs. And auxiliaries are of two types. First is primary auxiliary and second one is modern auxiliaries. Primary auxiliaries can further be subdivided into three parts. To be, to have and to do. And to be is known as the family. Be family. To have is known as have family. To do as do family. And it is the common tradition that we do not write, we do not write a verb alone. Putting to as it as if we are putting uh, you before your name, Mr. Puneet means Mr. is prefix to your name as for your identity, Mr. Puneet and Miss Prinka. So, what happens in the same way? We do not write any verb alone as, as a family of the verb alone. Rather, we put to. So, to be, to have and to do. Even in any examination question, you find a question 
that fill in the blanks fill this uh, with the suitable form of the verb so in bracket you will notice always there is a verb to go to come to sleep etc etc here to be is the uh, family and its its use can be in all three tenses present past and future so present singular for to be is is and present plural form of to be is are and present uh, i in present for i we use am past singular for to be was past plural for to be is were and past for future sing singular i and will for future i and we we will be using shall be and for future all other subjects we will be using will be coming to this to have family for present singular to have family is has and for present plural have for past singular and plural both we use had and for future to have family we use will have and shall have and here comes to do present singular form of to do is does and present plural form of to do is do past for past singular and plural both to do family the verb did is used so this much comes the auxiliary as the primary auxiliary uh, to be to have and to do and they are used accordingly as per the requirement of their subject coming to the second division of auxiliary that is modal auxiliaries and modal auxiliaries are will shall would should can could may might must ought to need dare has to have to had to and used to these are mostly used modal auxiliaries and we use for normal case i will go there but we use as it in special cases also if i am using i shall go there it is normal case uh, it is normal case but it if i am using i will go there it is not a normal case they will go there it is normal case they shall go there it is modal case say so then coming to would for using most polite request and various other usages we use would like would you like to give me a glass of water please and should for obligation duties we use should can expresses the ability whereas could expresses the ability in past and even probability of doing something may again probability at the same time polite request and uh, might strong for probability situation might is used then must and obligation and ought and compulsion and then ought to ought to is again you can say it is a parallel of should or moral obligation or moral breach need mostly it used in negative sentences like you need not go there you need you don't need to do this then you need not to do this then there and these all are used in situations and if somebody is have you uh, using has to have to had to means compulsion it is not the choice not the will 
rather somebody is doing something i had to go to uh, work shabby work to do service shabby work means that is not my choice i do not like that work so i used to past habit like i used to play cricket in the past here comes the transitive verb verb with object and for identifying that what is an object in a given sentence we need to go th- first understand how many types of objects are there and what is an object objects are of two types direct object and indirect object direct objects are mostly non living or small living things and by using subject and verb if we ask a question by using what then the answer will be direct object and by using whom if we are asking uh, a, a question using whom and the answer will be indirect object and for example he wrote a letter to his father whom did he wrote a letter to his father so the answer his father is an indirect object if we are raising a question what did he write the answer will be a letter direct object whom did he write to his father whom did he write a letter to his father his father is indirect object what did he write a letter so he wrote a letter to his father in this sentence uh, his father is indirect object and a letter is the direct object this is the way if any sentence is having both or even either of the objects like direct object or indirect object or both or vice versa direct object plus indirect object or or indirect object plus direct object then this will be transitive verb and means the verb is having an object in transitive verb in transitive verbs are verb without object for example birds are flying in the sky birds are flying in the sky means if you are if you want to identify whether the sentence is having direct object or indirect object or whether it is having an object or not you will raise the similar pattern question what are the birds flying no answer whom are the birds flying no answer so birds are flying in the sky is a sentence that is not having any object that is not having either of the object and that is why no neither and that is why this sentence is indirect object where flying in the sky birds are flying are flying verb in the sky becomes a verbial complement and why it is a verbial complement because in the sky it showing place it's an adverb showing place furthermore coming to the non finite or double parts of the speech we should see that non finites are to be divided into three parts gerund participle and infinitive non finites can be of three types gerund participle and infinitive gerund is verb first form plus ing participle present part again can be subdivided into three parts present past and perfect participle present participle is again verb first form plus ing past participle is third form of the verb whereas perfect participle is having plus third form of the verb and infinitive infinitive is two plus first form of the verb infinitive is Two plus verb first. So let us think how gerund is different from present participle. 
gerent can work as noun it can also work as subject for example seeing is believing seeing is believing swimming is a good exercise seeing is gerent but at the same time i am going to use seeing as present participle seeing a lion he ran away seeing a lion he ran away here in seeing is believing means seeing is the gerent uh, it is only subject plus is verb but here in seeing a lion seeing the sentence is denoting two action first seeing a lion and then running away he ran away seeing a lion he ran away so present participle we notice that simultaneously two actions are going on and seeing a lion is the first action he running away is the second action but first he sees a lion then he ran away so these action of seeing and the action of running away means uh, this is the denoting the two actions are there simultaneously in a given sentence that is why present participle is uh, having two actions and gerent and that is why it is different from gerent gerent is denoting only one action like seeing is believing and then coming to the past participle past participle is third form of the verb like i found my lost purse so which type of purse lost purse lost is a here working as an adjective not any purse but the lost purse coming to the perfect having plus third form of the verb like having seen a lion let us compare perfect present participle and perfect participle having seen a lion he ran away in seeing a lion is the first action running away is the second action clear so having seen a lion first action is over later on the second action starts so he having seen a lion he first saw the lion then he ran away having seen a lion he ran away so this is the perfect participle like finishing the task students went home finally coming to the infinitive infinitive 2 plus first form of the verb like i want to go home the sentence is having main verb as want to go you the infinitive i would like to eat uh maggi eat pizza to eat i would like liking is the one verb main verb of the sentence but to eat here is an infinitive used here 